Millions of Americans don't own guns, and you might even be one of them, and that's perfectly fine. You have the right to choose. Only you can make that decision about what's best for the safety of you and your loved ones. But you know what's not okay? The anti-gun crowd's relentless campaign to take that decision out of your hands. Nobody needs a gun, they like to say. Oh, really? In this video, we're going to look at how to respond to this line of argumentation. Because not only is this argument nonsense, it's actually dangerous nonsense. Hey folks, I'm Mark, and welcome to the Four Boxes Diner. So nobody needs a gun, huh? That's what we're told. That's really funny, because the right to self-defense is one of the most preciously guarded American rights under the Second Amendment, and it should be. Why is that? You see, because the right to self-defense protects the most fundamental right of them all, the right to life. But denying Americans their right to self-defense is exactly what many on the anti-gun side of things, the anti-gun crowd, wants to try to do. That's their goal. Look, you may decide personally not to have a gun. That's your choice. But how can you or anybody else talk about the right to self-defense in theory, but then deny that right or the tools to effectuate that right to others? You see, life should not be some sort of a reality TV show in the middle of the jungle, okay? The truth is that without a gun, most of us are really defenseless at the hands of violent criminals. I mean, do you have extensive training in hand-to-hand -hand fighting? Most people don't. Did you used to play in the NFL? Most people didn't. Do you have the physical strength and mental resilience to repel a predator in a fight or flight situation that takes place at three in the morning in your living room after you come up and, and wander downstairs in a groggy state? I mean, what if the criminal actually has a deadly weapon? Maybe the anti-gunners have watched too many Marvel movies. I like Marvel movies, but come on, they're movies, okay? In those films, you know, people like the Black Widow can beat up teams of men twice their size. But in real life, I'm guessing Scarlett Johansson, the actor, um, has not had decades of secret KGB training in hand-to-hand -hand combat to defeat bad people, doing bad things to good people. And even with all their martial arts mastery, Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan, I'm guessing, probably could not take out 30 men all at once in real life. A gun is the great equalizer. As the saying goes, God made man, but Sam Colt made them equal. Now ask yourself this, how can the anti-gunners morally impose their will on you, your family, your friends, and your neighbors? How can they deny you the right to defend you and your family? So why do the anti-gunners think nobody needs a gun? I mean, is it because they're convinced that if we shut down gun rights groups and take away guns and law-abiding citizens, then bad people will no longer have the tools to do bad things to good people? I don't know about you, but I stopped believing in unicorns and Santa Claus a long time ago. Have you ever heard the old adage, when guns are outlawed, only outlaws will have guns? That's exactly what happens when ultra-restricted gun control laws are in place. I mean, this is common sense, right? By definition, criminals are people who break the law, right? So why would they care about some gun control law when they're going to go out and commit terrible, heinous crimes like murder? They obviously don't care about gun control laws. Why would they? I mean, guns are the tool of their trade. Violent criminals always will find a way to get the tools they need to engage in criminality. And I hate to break it to you, but it's usually not going to be going through proper legal means. They're not going to go through background checks. They're not going to be guy buying guns at gun dealers. I mean, most of these um, criminals who would engage in violent crime, they're probably not allowed to have guns anyway because they're felons and thus would be violating, you know, Section 922 as felons in possession of the federal laws already. They don't care about any of that when you commit murder or robbery or any of these things. You see, the University of Pittsburgh studied this very issue. Do you know how many gun-related crimes were committed with legally, that's legally owned firearms? Turns out only about 20%. In other words, four out of five gun-related crimes involve illegal guns, illegal weapons. So don't think more gun restrictions are going to make you safer. It ain't. 
They just make law-abiding citizens easier prey for violent criminals. In other videos, we'll dig into why gun restrictions don't work, but for now, remember these three points. Number one, we have thousands of gun control laws on the books already, but they haven't prevented tragedies like school shootings and gang killings and the like. Number two, most of the proposed new gun restrictions out there have, would have nothing to do and would not prevent these types of tragedies in the future. And number three, gun-free zones are where more than 94% of all mass shootings have occurred. I'll put you some, uh, I'll put in the description a couple links uh, to the basis for those kinds of statistics. Now, does a gun guarantee your safety? No, nothing guarantees your safety. But again, a gun can be and is a great equalizer because with a gun, you have the ability, the chance to defend yourself against an attacker who's armed or is physically superior or mentally unstable or all three. Don't take my word for it because in 2021, a political science from a very prestigious university, Georgetown University, the man's name was Bill English. I've talked about him before on this channel. He conducted the most comprehensive study of gun use in America ever. This study revealed that there are about 1.67 million cases of armed self-defense each year. That's nearly 4,600 Americans every single day who did not become victims of crime because they had a gun. And remember, according to Professor English, the vast majority of these defensive gun uses every day in the United States did not involve the firing of a shot. Most of them involved just simply showing a gun, brandishing a gun, telling people you had a gun, all this stuff, and that was enough to deter the criminal from doing bad things to good people. Okay. Now, the Center for Disease Control has actually looked at many of these studies involving defensive gun use. And you know what they found? Well, they found that crime victims who use guns uh, generally have lower injury rates than victims who don't use guns. Makes sense. So tell me again why nobody needs a gun or wants a gun. And a good guy with a gun really can stop a bad guy with a gun. It's not a cliche. It's reality. And did you know, for example, to support this, that 20 mass shootings, of the 20 mass shootings in 2016 and 2017, four were stopped by citizens with valid gun permits. I'll put the links down below. Think of the lives that those gun owners saved, and we thank them, of course, for doing that. Keep in mind as well that an armed citizen often thwarts a criminal before a criminal can become a criminal or an active shooter, right? It stops it in the, in the bud, uh, or in the crib if you want. Now, you might be thinking, Mark, that's all well and good, but these scenarios you're talking about are also pretty unlikely. Oh, really? Is that so? Well, consider this. There are as nearly as many violent crimes in the United States every year as there are fires. Plenty of people have plans for what they'll do in the event of a fire. So why wouldn't you come up with a plan for protecting yourself from criminals as well? You may not need a fire extinguisher, but if you need a fire extinguisher, you really need a fire extinguisher. Likewise, you may never need a gun for self-defense, but if you need a gun for self-defense, you may really, really need that gun for self-defense. Again, the decision is yours. It's your right to choose. There's one more reason we know that nobody needs a gun line is totally bogus. And that's because most of the people crying the loudest to take away your gun rights, often many of them enjoy the protection of guns themselves or armed security or security of some sort. You know all about those Hollywood celebrities and pop stars who speak out against gun control. Uh, I mean, do you really think they want to remove guns, guns from their lives? Of course not. A lot of them, I'm guessing, use armed security to protect their homes and themselves, and a bunch of them walk around, I'm certain, with armed bodyguards. And let's think about this with a little bit of common sense and reality in mind, okay? If there's no evidence that guns save lives, then why does every single American law enforcement agency have men and women who carry firearms? What's the point of the guns? I mean, this includes the United States Secret Service that's responsible for protecting the president, uh, the vice president, and many other you know important government officials, all right? I don't see the anti-gun president, Joe Biden, trying to go out there to disarm his Secret Service. Why would he? That makes no sense. There's no chance that's going to happen, and why would it? And again, just like Biden, think of all those other government elites in Washington, D.C. who want to take away your right to self-defense. Not all of them, but some of them do. And a lot of them, I'm sure, have Secret Service protection as well. And did you know what? They're not the only uh, police force protecting politicians in Washington, D.C. There's tons of them, right? Some of the police agencies that are protecting uh, the District of Columbia, just off the top of my head, you know, there's the D.C. Uh, Metro Police, the United States Capitol Police, there's the Department of Homeland Security, 
there's the FBI, there's all the people at the Department of Justice, there's the National Parks Police, and the United States Marshals, and on and on and on. There's certainly plenty of law enforcement in Washington, D.C., and the vast majority of them carry guns. Did you know that Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg, you know, the boss of Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, spent $23 million on private security in 2020, and his chief operating officer, Sheryl Sandberg, spent another $7 million on private security in 2020? Do you want to take a guess, along with me, whether or not all that money spent on security came with a few guns and some armed officers or some armed security? I'm guessing there's a few guns involved with all that money spent. Again, I don't know for sure. Inquiring minds want to know. I think we can guess, and I think we know the answer. Of course, in reality, we know the truth, right? When politicians and activists speak about gun control, right, and why the Second Amendment is not good for modern America, what they're really saying is this, guns for me, but not for thee. So when these hypocrites tell you that you need to give up your right to self-defense, I recommend you tell them this, you, sir, or you, ma'am, go first. So let's wrap up. Millions of Americans protect themselves and their families with firearms. They choose firearms for self-defense for the same exact reason that the Secret Service and law enforcement across America use them to protect the president and other important people and their communities. You see, guns stop bad people from doing bad things to good people. So the next time you hear somebody say something like, nobody needs a gun, rely on the police, whatever it is, remember these three points. Number one, life is not like the movies. Unless you happen to be a trained assassin or a trained spy, an armed, violent criminal poses a serious threat to you, and a firearm may be the great equalizer and the thing that protects and saves your life and the life of loved ones. Number two, gun restrictions backfire because when guns are outlawed, only outlaws will have guns. This is actually not a new concept. Cesar Beccaria in the 18th century actually taught this in his writings to the founding fathers when they wrote the Second Amendment. So it's not a modern NRA slogan. It's actually something that has been well known for hundreds of years. And number three, the most vocal anti-gunner can be the biggest hypocrites. They often enjoy the protection of private security, many of whom I'm sure carry firearms, those same types of firearms that they want to deny you when it comes to protecting yourself and your family. Well, I hope you learned something here today at the Four Boxes Diner. Thanks again for joining us here at the Four Boxes Diner where we serve hot, fresh Second Amendment news and analysis. And if you like what you heard, please subscribe to this channel and help spread the word. And again, we'll see you next time soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.